Hello, it's April from April's Home, and today I thought I would share with you my recipe for chicken corn chowder. I have been making soup every Monday um, this month, and tonight we're having chicken corn chowder. So I thought that I would share with you my simple recipe for chicken corn chowder. So first I'll show you the ingredients that I have laid out here, and then I'll show you step by step how I make my soup. So first you'll need about two pounds of chicken breast. I purchased the diced chicken breast this time. I've also used just regular chicken breasts or chicken tenderloins. And if you don't have them diced up later, you will need to pull those out of the soup and dice them up and then put them back in the soup. So this kind of saves a couple of steps. So I thought that that would be nice to try. You'll also need some potatoes. You can use um, red potatoes or gold potatoes. It's nice to choose a softer skin variety so you don't have to spend a lot of time I'm peeling them. Um, so I got gold this time. I also got a nice big onion here, yellow onion, a bunch of celery, and this time I'm also using frozen crinkle cut carrots. If you don't have frozen crinkle cut carrots, you can also just of course chop up regular carrots, but again this saves a lot of time, um, so it's nice to have these on hand in the freezer for soup making. You will also need two cans of sweet corn and two cans of cream style corn and a big box of chicken broth. This is the size of box, let's see, that is a three pound box, so 48 ounce box. It's the 50% bigger one. You could also use your own chicken stock. And I'll be finishing off this soup with a little bit of heavy cream um, and probably also a little bit of milk as well so it's not super heavy. And then for spices I'll use some of my Italian seasoning, of course pepper and salt and a little bit of garlic powder. You will also need a little bit of instant mashed potatoes. I have a small box here. I will probably only be using about a cup of these and I'm going to use this today to thicken my soup. You will also need a little bit of olive oil to saute the onion in the celery at the beginning of this recipe. So that is where I'll get started. I'm going to go ahead and chop up this onion and chop up this celery and get it sauteing on the oven in a nice big pan and I'll show you what that looks like. So here I have my celery all chopped up in the pan here in my big soup pot and I've put in probably about a tablespoon or two of olive oil in the bottom of the pan just to kind of help this um, not stick while it starts sauteing. I've got the temperature on high but I will definitely be turning that down to medium as it gets um, warmed up and going and I'm gonna go ahead and let this get started sauteing while I chop up the onion. So now I also have the onions in here along with the celery. I have about a quarter inch um, rough chop on these onions, just uh, small enough so that they're nice and bite sized. They'll kind of work their way down to as I cook them. And if I see any big ones, I'll chop them up with my little um, flat spatula here. So I'm going to go ahead and keep those moving around and let them kind of get to sort of a translucent, softer um, point here. If I need to, if they start sticking, I will add just a little bit of the chicken broth kind of start steaming and cooking them. So I'm going to go ahead and let these cook down a bit and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so I've got the celery and onions cooked down a bit. The onions are starting to be translucent. The celery is getting a little bit softer. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the frozen crinkle cut carrots, the chicken, and the chicken broth. Okay, so I've added the rest of the chicken broth, the crinkle cut carrots, and the frozen chicken. Some of these pieces look pretty big, so when these cook up, I will go ahead and chop them up with this. And if any larger ones need to be removed and chopped up into smaller pieces, I will do that after it's done cooking. So I'm also going to increase the liquid level by adding two cups of water here. And I will probably add more as I add some of the other ingredients just to make sure that there's plenty of liquid to cook this in. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this back to a boil and then turn it down to like a medium simmer. And while it's doing that, I'll go ahead and get the potatoes all chopped up. So I have my potatoes all chopped up. I did them in various sizes, some this big and then some a little bit smaller. So the smaller ones will kind of cook down and thicken the soup and then the bigger ones will cook and still be like a whole piece of potato for in the chowder. I cut up about seven um, regular size of these potatoes. You could do anywhere between six and eight, maybe even ten if they're a little bit smaller. I just got a good sized bowl here and I'm going to go ahead and put these in the soup now. Just like so, and I'm going to give these a stir, and then I'm going to go ahead and add some seasonings now. I add all of my seasonings just to taste. I don't have an amount. I stir it small, then I give it a taste after it's done cooking, and then I add a little bit more towards the end. So I'm going to start here with a little bit of sea salt. Just put in a few shakes of that. It'll probably need a little bit more. But again, I like to start out small, 
so I can not over season it and kind of work with it until I get it seasoned just the way I like it. Next I'm going to put in a little bit of pepper. It's always nice to have pepper in a potatoey type chowder soup. So I've put in some pepper there. Next I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of garlic powder just for that a little bit of garlicky taste. Just a few little dashes there, not too much. You don't want it overly garlicky, unless of course you love garlic. But I didn't want to take away from the corn flavor, so just a little bit just to enhance it. And then some of my Italian seasonings. Probably a little less than a teaspoonful to start out with again. I really want to have the corn flavor, but I do like a little bit of Italian herb, salt, pepper, and garlic powder to just enhance the flavor of all of this um, soup here. I'm also going to go ahead and add just a little bit more water. Mm, I think I'll start with a cup, and I might add another cup later. I just don't want to make it too watery because I'll be adding some milk and cream later there. Um, you can see another big piece of chicken there that I need to kind of chop up a little bit. I'll set that to the side. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let this cook up a bit, and then I'm going to add our final ingredients the corn and the cream. The soup has been cooking away. The potatoes are starting to get softened. Everything's cooked through pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the corn now and then let that get cooking as well before I add in my final bits of spices and cream. So I'm going to go ahead and add two cans of cream corn. That will help to thicken it a bit and also just add in a nice corn flavor there. You can see it's not really a thick chowder yet. That will happen a little bit more when I add in the cream and uh, if I need to thicken it a little bit I will show you that step as well. And now I'm going to add in two regular cans of just uh, sweet golden sweet corn. This is the sort that I get from Costco. I really love this kind of corn. So now is the time where it really starts to become a corn chowder, a chicken corn chowder here. Of course you have to have the corn in a corn chowder. You can see how good that looks starting to really look yummy here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more salt and pepper. Needs just a little bit more. So just a little bit of salt and pepper and I'll stir that up and let that come back to a nice uh, sort of a medium low simmer and let that cook away. At this point, now that there is uh, corn and potato and cream corn in here, it starts to get a little bit starchy. So what you want to avoid is this getting too hot and then forgetting to stir it. If you forget to stir it, you will start to get a starchy bottom of the soup pot and it can start to kind of burn towards the bottom. So you want to keep the heat at a lower simmer like just a nice steady simmery roll there and you want to make sure you stir it and check on it frequently. I have in the past had soups where I have forgotten it and it does burn a little bit to the bottom. What you want to do if that happens is don't scrape the bottom and if it's not too bad you can transfer the soup to another pot and finish that cooking and just clean up the pan. That way you don't waste the whole batch of soup. But the ticket is if it does stick to the bottom you definitely don't want to scrape that bottom up. You'll kind of incorporate sort of a burn flavor into your soup. But of course that can all be avoided by keeping a watch on it and keeping the simmer nice and low. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cook and see how well it thickens up. Then I'll come back, add the cream, and if it needs a little bit of thickener I'll tell you a couple of tricks that I have to thicken up my soup. Okay, so in order to thicken my chicken corn chowder today, I'm going to use mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. Now there are a few different ways to thicken a chowder. One of the ways is to make a white sauce using flour, butter, and milk. And that is a good way. It works great. It's just a little bit time consuming. And another method would be to use a slurry of cornstarch and water. But again, I don't want to use that method today just because I'd like it a little bit thicker than the cornstarch will thicken it. So one of the ways I love to thicken chowder is just with a little bit of instant mashed potatoes. I add in about a cup um, and kind of stir that all together in when I'm adding in the milk so it kind of thickens the whole pot and that way it doesn't reduce the flavor at all. It just gives it a little bit more of a potato flavor and since it's a chowder that matches really nicely. So that's just one method of thickening it. Again you can add in a regular white sauce thickener if you want to do that instead but this is just a nice and easy tip.
here's how our soup is coming along. You can see it's looking pretty nice here. It's nice and full of ingredients there. I'm going to go ahead now and thicken it up with some instant mashed potatoes. I have a little less than a cup here. Again, these are just plain original instant mashed potatoes. None, none of the flavored variety. I just like to sprinkle it on in a little thin layer and then kind of incorporate that in so it doesn't turn lumpy or anything like that. Kind of stir that in and I'll go ahead and do that for the um, whole cup full here. Okay, so I'll get the rest of that stirred in. And also at this time I'm going to go ahead and add a cup of whole milk. This is not the cream yet, this is just a little bit of whole milk. If you only have 2%, that would probably work too. But it's nice to have whole milk because it gives it just a little bit more of a full bodied flavor there. So you can see now, just with the addition of that one cup of milk and mashed potatoes, we're already looking a lot more like a chowder. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cook up for about 10 minutes now, and then I'm going to come back, stir it around a bit, see if it needs a little bit more thickener or if it needs a little bit more milk, and we'll go ahead and see where it's at at that point. And at the very end, I'll incorporate the cream and then it'll be ready to go. So my soup is continuing to cook up. I decided I wanted to add a little bit more of the um, instant mashed potatoes here just to make it a little tiny bit thicker, thicker there. This is a little bit um, less than half a cup here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir that in. And again, I'm also making sure to just be careful about um, the bottom burning at this point because it is really starchy. So I'm keeping the heat nice and low. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in some cream. So I'm just going to kind of pour it in just as I see um, how it looks. Put a little bit in there. It's probably about a quarter cup. Just kind of give it a stir. I don't want it to be too heavy, but cream just adds a wonderful flavor. So I'm going to add a little bit more now. Give that a stir. You can see it's looking really yummy and really a lot like chowder. It's nice and thick here. You can start to really feel that it's getting a nice thickness to it and it looks really delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and let this continue cooking, kind of incorporate that cream there and the rest of the potatoes. And while that is cooking, I'm going to make up a quick batch of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix. I love to have cornbread with my chicken corn chowder. So I let the cream cook in a little bit. It's all nice and heated through. All of the veggies and chicken and all of that inside the soup is all cooked up. And this is the final product. So that is how you make chicken corn chowder. It's very easy. Remember to give it a taste before it's finally done. I did add a little bit more pepper um, towards the end there. It needed just a little bit more... Um, of the zest of pepper in there and um, that is how you make it. It's very easy, very yummy, delicious soup and I also cooked up a little um, batch of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix here and now I'll go ahead and serve up a bowl so you can see what that looks like. So here is the finished product. This is my chicken corn chowder all served up for dinner with cornbread on the side there. One of the ways I love to finish off this soup is to put a little tiny thin pat of butter on the top of it it is absolutely delicious. You don't have to do that if you're watching um, your fat content, but it does add a really nice flavor to any of the chowder um, soups that I make, and I just love serving it that way. My whole family loves it that way. So that is chicken corn chowder. I hope you enjoyed watching me make my chicken corn chowder. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more videos from April's home. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.